they got a thousand a month in cash flow and maybe they're bringing in 5k to 6k in income per month and they do a $19,800 chunk with only 12,000 in cash flow that is too risky in my opinion so then I go lower and I said we need to justify chunking 12,000 how do we do that well we we start looking at some of the debts that the person has let's say this HELOC is at a 4% rate so we know absolute max number is 19.8 times 4% divide that by 12 they're looking at 66 bucks a month is what it's going to cost them for however long they owe that 19.8 for the first 30 days that's how much it'll cost them okay cool so in order to justify chunking 12,000 if I only have a thousand to work with cash flow per month, what debts are we eliminating? Let's say there's, they've got a 22% uh, credit card. It's got a $5,000 balance. And this particular credit card charges them 2.5% of the balance. So it's 125, right? And then let's say they've got a lending club personal loan for that remainder 6k on it and the monthly payment say it's like 350 a month okay well if they go and let's just say these are the the most attractive debts to go after even in the debt snowball these are the two attractive debts the only other debt they have is say a mortgage and student loans right let's just say they got a, like a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage we don't even touch that way too big to go after it and they've got like 50k in student loans again way too big to go after it it's in let's say it's in uh, uh forbearance so they're not even making payments on it and they're not even getting charged interest and then let's say their mortgage is at four percent okay so obviously these two are not what we're looking at and all they have is this 11 grand to go after that's going to increase my cash flow by 475 plus the 1k I already had. I'm now at 14.75. Take that number, right? Times 12. Now I'm at 17,700 projected cash flow for that year. If I'm at the top of the year or wherever I'm at in in my time frame of coming across velocity banking, I just justified getting close to the 12,000 mark, right? I could do 12,000 times 66 percent right oh, shoot twelve thousand times seven thousand nine twenty you would say that's like a smaller chunk and probably the best thing to knock out would out of, out of these two you know in the in the debt snowball world they'd say go after this in the debt avalanche world they would also say go after this because of the interest in the velocity banking world we like cash flow i think i'll do more damage and I'll go faster, right? So I take that 350, 6K. So I'd actually, if I was to do a smaller chunk, more so in the neighborhood of over here, micro chunking, 7,920, I'm taking this one out because of that cash flow gain. Cash flow is going to work stronger in my favor than me trying to go after interest. It's not always the case. I in, in velocity banking world, I attack cash flow first, interest second, balance typically would be next depending on right and there's multiple ways to run it right either way we're going to get results whether you stuck with that snowball you go micro we're going to get results what you don't want to do is force velocity banking to work when this is the clear method because velocity banking is not 100 of the time always going to work in your favor it's we're, we're playing a game of of interest who can pay the le the least amount of interest pay off the debt the fastest. That's the game we're playing and debt snowballs are measuring stick, right? So if I did 7,920, I attacked that 6,000, I've got 1,920 left. That 1,920 goes to the five. That'll reduce this payment a little bit. And I do velocity banking on the line of credit. Soon it, as soon as it gets close to zero, I don't necessarily have to wait to hit zero. Why? Because this balance is so small. Might as well move that 22 to to four as soon as possible right if you were to compare micro chunking against my normal 
chunking of say two thirds of the line of credit or cash flow times 12 times 66%, I believe this would go faster because I'm knocking it out now as opposed to later. How much faster do I go ahead of you? I mean, now it's not, I don't think it's a huge difference, but when you look at the whole time frame, I might beat you by a year. When we look at the whole debt-free timeline, I just might beat you by a, by a year, eight months, year and a half. I think that's, you know, very, very uh, attractive. And then looking back at that snowball that we might be like three years ahead, four years ahead, five years ahead, just depends. So this is how my mind is working. Every single scenario I'm running with you guys, here's what's flowing through my mind. I'm evaluating the person first. I'm asking you questions. I'm getting to know you, where you're from and your history with money and just trying to get as much data as possible. And I say, all right, um, Joe, are you comfortable? You've got this 30K HELOC. If we use 66%, that wouldn't make sense for right now. That would be taking on too much risk. So we may not want to go after the golden rule of chunking 66%. I know you hear that on my channel often, but let's really evaluate that to see if that really makes sense. If I actually chunk 19.8, 11 goes here, where does the other, the difference go of, of uh, 8,800? I guess you'd apply it towards the mortgage. I guess you could do that. Problem with that is you now have got, you now still owe 19.8 on the, on the HELOC. You increased your cash flow, yes, up to 17.7. It's going to take you more than a more than nine months to wipe this out right so my final let me do a recap real quick you've got micro chunking in your notes that's one option two-thirds method i just look at my line of credit limit times it by 66 percent. boom you get 19.8 you chunk that amount right that's one method before you do it you want to justify it how do you justify it look at your cash flow per month times it by 12 what number do you get? If it's lower than 66% of your line of credit, and you'll hear me say this in videos, if your cash flow times 12 is lower than 66% of your line of credit, then we just either chunk the full cash flow times 12 or less is one idea. Look how the numbers kind of came out with this quick example. I never got to the full 12. I got to 11. I justified it because of the cash flow gain and the interest savings. That's literally debt consolidation. I just consolidated 22%, 13% to four. Don't think anybody would argue with that. That's 11,000 sitting over here. I'm going to now cash flow for the next 12 months, 17.7 roughly. And I still have quite a bit of space in the HELOC. In case anything goes down, emergency, in case life happens, I can dip into that, right? That's what makes this very uh, attractive and reduces my, my risk. So the final component of justifying your chunk is I prefer to have my chunks paid off in roughly six to nine months or less. So when you're running your numbers, if you're thinking about doing a chunk, let's say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chunk 20 grand towards my debt, and you run the numbers, you're like, hmm, it's gonna take me 12 months to pay back the line of credit, bring it back down to, to zero. That may not be effective, and that might be taking on too much risk. We don't know what's gonna happen in 12 months, but in the next six to nine months, I, I, could, I could project that. It's a little more realistic. I'm not looking too far out and, uh, the, the faster I pay down that line of credit, the, the lower my risk is as I'm getting these results. Okay, so six to nine months or less, preferably paying off the chunk in full or close to zero. Another way is at the point of when your debt tool has been completely offset by the savings. And then maybe if you couple the credit card with it and your borrowing cost is basically nothing or it's like zero or at that point you're actually making or earning more money because of the move you made so six to nine months or less if you get to 12 months and longer i don't like it preferably i would not chunk that high doesn't make sense so there's a lot of different schools of thought in the velocity banking world like when you look at other uh, uh channels you know one school of thought is very in favor of 
of this or even beyond that. You know, one school of thought, they'll say they look at all this debt and they'll say, okay, we're just going to replace this whole mortgage with a first position HELOC, right? And then what they make you do, <clears throat> of what I've heard from clients, is once this is done, they've, they've uh, redirected this $200,000 amortized 4% loan to say a lower or identical simple interest rate. Then they, they want you to take these debts, move them into the HELOC in the student loan, move them into that first position HELOC instead of a first position mortgage. I don't really care for that method. Why? Number one, um, let's say you did that 200,000 uh, and you got a first position HELOC for say 250,000. So you've got 50K of space and you still owe the 200. It's just at a lower interest rate and a lower monthly payment. The problem with this in my eyes is I think we're going backwards. I mean, in the, in the debt snowball world, they, they're like, you know, this also has to do with the human factor of it, where if you, they tend to start with the lower debt. And I'm kind of in that same school of thought as well. I, I believe in building, in building momentum. So what they try to do is they try to get you to get a bunch of 0% credit cards to like almost stack debt at 0% in the hopes that you'll either make more money, have more equity in the property to move all the debt in there. And, uh, you know, they'll claim five to seven years debt free. I think it could work. I just haven't met a client. I haven't met anyone that has successfully done this. The people that have become my clients came from this school of thought and they were in a predicament. They're like, Hey, I got a first position HELOC. I got all this debt inside of it. I really don't have any, any space. And now I got seven different 0% credit cards with a bunch of different balance transfers and they're expiring. I, to me, what is this called? Over leveraging, right? They went for the biggest debt out of all their other debts. And I believe that is over leveraging, not a fan of it. So in this school of thought, we're measuring the general popular way of, of getting out of debt. We're measuring against our advanced strategy here. And we're also measuring it against our, our own lives, like our, our risk levels, our cash flows, anything going on in the family. You got any vacations coming up, trips, birthdays, celebrations, big expenses coming up that might hinder you.